What's up everyone, my name is Michael and welcome to another episode. Today it's gonna be about optimizing the weight of, uh, yeah, this bike. 702. So I think I already mentioned in another episode that I'm planning to do a bunch of uh, yeah, weight optimization updates um, to maybe get the bike down to a UCI illegal level. So yeah, what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be swapping out this Uno stem here in the front for an extra light hyper stem. We're gonna be swapping out the C post clamp, which is an original, I think, steel uh, or definitely heavy metal uh, Dacordi one for uh, an ultralight Darimo, I think, four gram heavy one. Then um, there's some small bits, like I'm gonna try and see uh, how much weight I can save with swapping out the top cap up here for a full carbon one. Um, funny enough, from a company that's called Risk weird kind of brand name for a cycling component. Then um, I also have this Carbon Works mount up here in the front, which is actually quite light, but I found something that I think is lighter from a company called Alpitude. Um, so it's also a full carbon, uh, a full carbon computer mount, uh, which I think is gonna help us to save some grams. Also, I'm gonna be trying to uh, swap out my beloved Prologo saddle for, um, yeah, one that I found on AliExpress for I think 20 or 30 bucks, which is ridiculously light. I already put it on uh, my other bike, my other steel bike, just to test ride it if it's really comfortable or not. And it turns out it's, it's way more comfortable than it looks like. I'm only worried a little bit about the sharp edges. Um, I mean, they're not really sharp, but proper edges that they uh, that the saddle has on the side if it's not gonna rip um, into the bib shorts. But I guess we're gonna see over time. And yeah, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna be taking off the logos with, um, yeah, nail polish remover at some point, I guess. What else are we gonna do? So, um, initially I kind of liked those orange um, those orange outer cable housings together with the brakes and with the uh, orange or mango Chris King headset, but um, I think they're quite heavy. So I'm gonna be swapping them out for some Jaguar Elite Link um, system, which is supposed to be lighter. So let's see how many grams we're gonna be saving on that. And um, as we're gonna be swapping out um, the cables, I need to take off the handlebar tape anyways, which is um, so far my favorite handlebar tape, which is the Supercas, I don't know what it's called, or what the model is, like the super cushy one. Um, but it seems quite heavy. So now I'm gonna try one from uh, the company called Most, and it's called Superlight. So I expect to save a couple of grams there. And uh, yeah, with that, you know what's coming up. I would say, let's get started. We're gonna start with the stem um, and yeah, then take it from there. Okay, so first of all, let's get this stem off here. So now then there is a slightly odd way in um, yeah, getting the bottom screws uh, from the stem out because the, um, the upfront mount is mounted here and the way it is mounted there are some tiny screws which are going through here through custom screws which actually come with a mount that have a hole in it and uh, yeah that thin screw basically screws through the bigger screw into the mount itself. So now, first of all, I need to remove the tiny screws and then I can basically, um, yeah, loosen the big ones and get my handlebar out. So let's do it. So let's get these ones out first. They're a bit hard to reach and obviously not, uh, yeah, compatible with a standard, with a standard tool that you normally would have with you on a ride out. So if the computer mount loses up, while you're out riding, you're a little screwed. And there we go. Okay, that's good. Let me get that screw out. So now we get the mount out and uh, yeah, the tiny screws as well. So yeah, now I don't know if you can see it, but actually these screws, those are the ones that I was talking about. They actually have a hole in them. Um, and these are the ones that also came with the mount. So let me just show you if I stick the thin screw through the back again. You'll see that it's coming out here in the front and this way it was mounting to the computer mount. But now, yeah, it just has a regular, a regular opening here that I can just unscrew them, turn them loose and get my handlebar out. Out as well. All right. 
Okay, so now we can take the stem off. There we go. Extra light hyper stem has a little bit more of an angle downwards, but I just noticed that it is, it is quite a bit shorter. So um, yeah, let's see how that's gonna fit. Cause I thought I ordered the right one, which is supposed to be a hundred millimeter. The downside with this extra light stem is um, it's using those uh, Torx T15 screws. So I needed to order an extra bit for that because uh, yeah, it doesn't seem to be like such a common size um, yeah, in those bicycle toolboxes. So let me fit that one on here now. There we go, that looks good. Doesn't need a spacer on top either, I think. Okay. And yeah, let's get the screws out in the front. Then we'll have a look at um, how the upfront mount is going to be mounted. So we also cover that right away while we're on it. And uh, yeah, then we can mount the handlebars. Okay, so one interesting uh, finding in the instructions from the extra light stem, it actually says that the clamping surfaces should be completely degreased and um, yeah, so no uh, carbon gripper paste on it. That's interesting, but uh, yeah, let's quickly degrease it. Let's see how it's going to work because the clamping forces are also quite low on this. Um, I mean, it says it in the extra light manual and it even says it in the Darimo manual um, that if you're using an extra light stem, I think you can only do up to three Newton meters. So I'll double check that. And uh, yeah, if it's, if it's not three Newton meters, I'll put it up here. Also for the ones who are already interested in uh, yeah, the individual component weight savings, um, of course, every time I swap something out, I'm trying not to forget to uh, yeah, weigh the old component that I'm taking off and uh, weigh the naked new component before putting it up. So yeah, there are going to be some uh, cuts coming in here and there showing you the uh, yeah, before and after weight, kind of. Okay, so now that everything's clean, let me put back the hyper stem again here fantastic and we're gonna also now be using this um, extra lightweight carbon top plate um, for the compression plug I'm only going to be compressing everything in a second once the handlebars are in and I can make sure that everything's like nice and centered so now let's get the front bolts out um, let's get the handlebar in and then also let's mount the computer mount There we go. Okay, so let me try to bring back the handlebar in here. So this up front mount is going to be mounted to here uh, via the bottom screws of the stem. But of course, as it has some thickness to it, it also came with, uh, yeah, with longer screws that basically are going to be able to compensate for that. There are also some spacers, um, which are basically going to be mounted in between the clamp and the upfront mount only to basically have like a proper mounting surface without um, yeah without the mount rubbing against any curves here in the stem so let's quickly try to assemble it so I'm gonna take the screws I'm again already gonna be dropping them through the upfront mount and then let me put on the spacers um, they need to be mounted with a thick part towards the mount and on this side as well and yeah, now I'd say it's ready to be assembled. Then we're gonna adjust the handlebar position, handlebar angle, and then we're gonna tighten those screws to spec. But yeah, I'll have to look up the actual torque values because yeah, it looks like both companies, Darimo and Extra Light, are very picky about what the max actually is here. So let's quickly adjust it centered I think that looks good let me see the angle that looks good as well it needs to be a little steeper there we go okay so fun fact um, looking at the at the instructions for the extra light stem as well as the Darimo handlebar and yeah on the hyper stem it says to um, only torque the front bolts to maximum or torque them up to 1.5 up to a maximum to 2 newton meters while the Darimo one normally you can torque it up up to 4 newton meters but if you have an extra light stem 
the torque shouldn't be higher than three newton meters, which is uh, yeah even higher than you should be doing it in the first place. So I guess we're going to be tightening it up to uh, two newton meters, which uh, is the maximum based on the extra light instructions. Okay. Also, one more addition in regards to. Um, the bar clamp tightening sequence based on the instructions. So first of all, I need to tighten the upper bolts completely to the max, basically until the bracket is touching uh, the stem and then undo it one full rotation and then tighten the bottom bolts to spec. So I guess it's gonna be two newton meters and then tighten the upper bolts to the same spec. So also two newton meters. So let's quickly do that. So I set my torque wrench up to 1.9 newton meters so just to make sure that I'm not overshooting. And um, yeah, so let's uh, screw in those ones completely. That seems like it's completely screwed in, completely screwed in. And now I'm gonna unscrew it one full rotation. So that's half, that's another half, half rotation, another half rotation. And now we go to town I mean to town with two newton meters on the bottom ones. A little bit hard to reach with that up front mount here, but it's okay. So we go with two newton meters on 1.9. Okay, then we add the click. Click. I'm gonna do the same thing at the top. Click. Click here. Let me see if I can rotate the bar. If that actually is fixed. Wow. That seems pretty solid. Not bad. Okay, so now let's do the compression plug and um, yeah, the rear screw is down here. So now let me tighten the compression plug. Press everything together again. I'm doing this one by feel. Not too much, not too little. That seems good. Okay, and now we can tighten the ones from the hyper stem. Maximum clamping force three newton meters. So I'm gonna go with two and a half just to be on the safe side. And yes, let's tighten it. Somebody recently told me in a video that I should always be grabbing my torque wrench at the end because that's how the torque click is kind of calibrated. So um, thank you for that comment. Um, I'm trying to pay attention to that now. Yeah, always make sure that you tighten the compression bolt first, that was our click, before you tighten those bolts, because otherwise that compression plate is not gonna compress anything because, yeah, the stem is already fixed in place, so it's basically just gonna be pressing against the stem. Click. So while we're here at the front, let me take off the handlebar tape, and then, uh, yeah, let's do some rewiring. Let's go. So I don't know if you can see this, but while pulling off the handlebar tape, which is sticky on the inside, one of those carbon fibers came off here from the handlebar. So it was running this way and goes in diagonal. To be honest, I don't know what to do with it now because I don't want to pull it because then it's just gonna, I'm gonna, just gonna pull out more. So I, I guess I'm gonna put on a little bit of electrical tape, take some pictures and send it to Darimo to see what they're thinking. Yeah, hope it's fine. Bit of an expensive handlebar for this to happen, to be honest. Okay, so now I'm just gonna quickly undo all the old cables so we can, uh, yeah, we can start fresh. So let's start with um, the front brake, I would say, because it's easier. So front brake in Europe on the left-hand side. First of all, I'm gonna fiddle in the cable. Cool thing actually with this uh, jack wire is that the ends are black and not silver. Not that anybody's gonna see it because it's gonna be hidden in the lever, but still. Nice little detail. So let me fiddle the brake cable through here. Oh. 
So now, the way this seems to work is you have a regular cable outer housing, like, you know, like with any other regular set, and then you have the cool part being those little bits. And um, basically for now, you're gonna take a small part of uh, the regular outer housing to route the cable out up to the place where you plan to wrap your handlebar tape. And then at this point, the regular outer housing mounts into you know, this little adapter like this and then continues with those little elements which are uh, yeah, looking way cooler and are supposed to be lighter as well. So let's give it a try. So yeah, let me measure this. Let me cut this to a length that's gonna work. I mean, I can already see by the shading and the stickiness where the handlebar tape was ending before. So let's say I plan to um, yeah, add the handlebar tape somewhere here. So let me measure this roughly. Can be rough, it's totally fine. So let's cut it here. So now we can already take that, guide this through here and into the shifter. Maybe tape it here already so that the corner is nice. Okay. That looks good. And now we can continue with the chainy part. So we can put that adapter on top of it. Okay, so now we can take this chain link part and also use some electrical tape and attach it to the handlebar so it's not moving around too much. There we go. There are some adapters in the set which look like this. There you go. And this part is where the, the link is gonna go in and this narrower part is actually gonna go in here into the brake itself. So what we gotta do now is measure how much, how many links we need, then cut, cut the tube and uh, yeah, attach it to the brake. Pretty straightforward. So let's see. I don't want too much of this stuff floating around here. So I would say we're gonna go with cutting the links here. There we go, nice clean cut. So it is important that the lining that you just cut has a nice circular surface in the middle. So what I like to do is just take a, a corkscrew and go in there and open it up a little bit. There we go. Now it's nice and nice and round again. So I'm gonna take the last link off as well. And there is a little end cap that comes with it that was already part of the um, of that chain already in the first place. I'm just gonna put this one on here. You put on that adapter and then it goes into the brake. And now we can actually push through the cable out of the shifter. There we go. Now we can pull it through here. All the way. Done. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing uh, with the rear brake. Now that we have this attached nice and cleanly, um, let's put the cable through because I didn't put the cable through um, in the beginning as you might have noticed. So let's push it through at least that comes out here and then we take care of uh, yeah the end part basically going from here to the brake. Okay, so let me route this back as it just fell out. There we go. Now we should be able to pull the cable all the way through. So now let's have a look at the rear part. Okay, so here on the rear brake, um, it's pretty much gonna go the same. So we have the adapter that's gonna go into the brake. Then we have the end of those links, which is going into the adapter. And then basically from here, we just need a length that's uh, yeah, going back into the cable stop here. And I think it actually looks like it's a pretty good length already. I think it's fine if it's a little bit loose here, because as you might know, or as you might remember those EE brakes, this part is moving quite a bit, so it also absorbs a little bit of that extra length. So 
as you see like this, it would be the maximum stretch. So let me see where we want to have the cable stop. I would say that this is actually quite all right. So I'll just cut, I'll just cut the inner liner. I'll just take the last stop out, feed it into um, the cable stop of the frame and then, and then we can pull the cable through. So let's do this. Let's feed it in here, that looks good. So now we can pull the rest of the cable through and then we're also good with the rear brake. Yeah, that's looking good. So now I'm gonna do pretty much the exactly same thing just uh, with the front and rear shifter. Um, I think this might be a time lapse or like a sped up uh, phase because yeah, I mean, it, this isn't a full bike build video or it's not supposed to be a full bike build video. It's not what you signed up for, right? You just wanted to see how much grams can we save with all those upgrades. So let's keep this part nice and snappy. So um, yeah, I would say see you after I wired the, the shifters, um, yeah. accidentally threaded the cables from the shifters, the left and right, the, the wrong way around. So I just quickly had to uh, rewire that. So in case you've seen that in the time lapse, uh, you noticed that. Congrats, you passed the test. So shifting and braking sorted out now. So now it's time to finish it up with uh, this super light bar tape. Let's go. Done. Okay, so now it's time for the saddle swap. So this is already um, my Pro Logo Dimension 143, the NAC edition. So it is quite light because it has carbon rails. But let's see how much, uh, how many grams we can actually save with going with a full carbon uh, saddle without any padding. Um, it has quite an interesting mounting setup here. It is being mounted with Dyneema um, wires, or however you want to call it. And um, yeah, I mean, you're gonna see how it's attached and uh, mounted. So let's quickly do it. So let's loosen up those bolts here first. So we can get the old saddle off. Let's see if I can take off the fabric, the Dyneema. Done. So yeah, I mean, it's being held with these kind of uh, yeah, I don't want to, I don't know if, it, if I should call it wire, but I mean, it's strong like wire, um, but it is fabric, I think, in the end. All right. So let me give this a quick way versus uh, the new saddle. So 
so you can see quite a significant weight saving. So let's put this one on here. Let's see if I'll be able to mount this again. It's always a little bit fiddly. I'll show you on the rear one. So you need to take that Dyneema loop, wrap it, wrap it around here. And then the ends of it, they have to wrap around the rear side of that little mount down here. So let me try to do that. As I said, it is a bit fiddly, but once it's installed, it is quite solid. End of the loop. Okay, and now you grab that upper part and mount it to the front of that mount. Yeah, that is pretty much it. So first of all, you want to align you want to align your saddle um, level, especially with using that front screw. So right now I'm just going to do it by hand, and then you tighten tighten everything with that rear screw here. Okay, so I quickly checked, and um, yeah, once you adjusted the the level of your saddle, you need to tighten that rear screw with three newton meters. So let's do it. There's the click. Should be good now. Sounds always a little bit uh, scary when you mount carbon on carbon and pull it tight, but uh, I guess that's normal. So let's also see how this one rides. So the next thing we'll do is, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna swap out that uh, seat post clamp for um, yeah also the Remo one. So let's also see how much lighter the new one is gonna be versus the old one. But first of all, we gotta unscrew this completely, get the seat post out to get the clamp off, and then I'll actually wanna quickly show you something. So I had a little bit of an issue with my Darimo seat post recently. I mean, it is an ultra light one. It also has uh, those markings here where um, the clamp area is supposed to be. It's actually quite a narrow clamp area. Um, but for that, it is ridiculously light. But last time when I went on a little cycling trip two weeks ago, last week, um, when I was taking the bike apart, I noticed that there is a little, yeah, like a little pressure point um, basically almost like the negative from uh, yeah basically the the seat tube here and um, I think I got a picture so let me put in a picture here real quick and then I think it took a week Darimo got back to me because I of course reported it um, as kind of like a warranty claim no questions asked they just asked me to like send it in uh, they fixed it they sent it back I think within a week everything was everything was done it looked quite good you've only seen like tiny markings um, where the damage has been, so they really repaired my seat post. Um, and then I was riding that seat post for a weekend with like some intense climbs and also a lot of cobblestone. And now, let me see if you can see it. Now here, exactly in that area, it's exactly the same point where it was before, of course, because I'm riding at the same height. You have, you have a little bit of a marking again and you can feel you can feel that it is sticking out a little bit, so it compressed around it. So even though I'm obviously tightening um, that seat post by spec, so I think I'm even below spec, I'm uh, landing around four or four and a half newton meters. Um, so with some carbon, carbon gripper paste, it's no problem, I got no slippage, but, um, but yeah. I of course reported that back to Darimo, but I think they're now at some trade shows, so I haven't heard back from them for a week, um, but yeah. I hope that they're either going to tell me that this is normal and I can totally ride it again or um, yeah if I need to send it in again for repair so I'll keep you posted on that maybe in some shorts because I don't think that's worth the story but uh, yeah let's continue with uh, the seat post clamp okay so let me take this old one off it's an original Dacordi one which is nice but it is, it is quite heavy versus look at this new beauty with the Darimo logo on here. Very nice. We're gonna put some fresh um, 
carbon grip paste on, the one that also came with the Darimo seat post, um, just that we can keep the torque as minimal as possible. So let me rub this in here. Now let's drop the seat clamp on here. It also looks quite nice. Okay. And let's slot the seat post in. Based on the Darimo instructions, the maximum torque that you should be torquing this up is five newton meters. As I said before, I was uh, totally fine with going with four, four and a half. So let's tighten it to 4.3, maybe this time to just be safe. Okay, let's go. There we go. Really, really nice. Really, really nice clamp. Okay, so I think I'm done. Um, so now I'm just quickly gonna cut and trim um, all those new cables to um, yeah to size at the end caps, and then um, yeah, then I'm gonna mount the wheels, and then we can finally weigh it and see how much and if we save some weight. I think we definitely save some weight, but how much? Okay, so finally it's the time to weigh this thing. Let's find out if all that effort was really worth it. Um, but I mean, it's marginal gains that we're talking about. I mean, we're talking really about saving individual grams. I guess we're talking about a two-digit number. Maybe if we're lucky, three-digit, but I assume two-digit. Let's find out. So, trusty, trusty Y-hang is coming out again. So, turn it on, set it to kilograms. It is on kilograms already. So, you can grab the bike by the saddle. I know you shouldn't be doing that, but let's go do it once more, maybe. All right. Six point nine two five. I think that's not bad. So it's almost three digits. I think we've been coming from 7.05 kilograms, something like that. Um, so yeah, in the, in the upper dual digit saving, but still, I mean, lots of time invested to, um, yeah, to rewire and uh, yeah, swap out all those components. Some money invested. Uh, I mean, the Elite Link um, cable set isn't really the cheapest one. Um, of course, that Darimo clamp, I mean, nothing from Darimo is really cheap. Um, but yeah, also that upfront mount and the extra light stem, also not really on the cheap side. So you could really question, was it worth it or not? But I think at some point when you get to like really trying to shave off the last grams, that's basically where every single gram just gets more expensive. So um, yeah, I think there's still some more potential in the crank set. So let's see if I can find something that's maybe slightly on a budget. That's not a clavicula kind of 1,500 euro crank set, but let's see. Also just to add um, before the last weekend trip that I did um, in mines or two mines, I also topped up the sealant a little bit. So I think I added around 20 to 25 milliliters of fresh sealant into each tire. So that gives us an additional 50 gram penalty. So I was also considering to go with these kind of like TPU inner tubes because they're ridiculously light. They're very easy to fit. You don't have to struggle with sealant going all over the place when you're mounting it. Um, and uh, yeah, the only thing that I'm a little bit worried about is using them on a bike with rim brakes because I heard that of course the rim heats up. These aren't really that heat resistant. Is it gonna work or not? Um, I mean, I'll be very interested um, to hear from you. If you're using these kind of inner tubes on a rim brake bike, let me know what your experience is. Just drop it in the comments, I'll be very interested. Um, maybe I'll still do that experiment anyways, just to see how many more grams we can actually save off of that. So yeah, I hope that you like this video. I hope that you like and enjoy these kind of content. And uh, if you did, consider hitting that like button, consider subscribing. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.